I, I actually find myself walking along going, I'm Superman. I'm gonna tell you a little story. The first time that I met Diedrich, he wouldn't look at me. He refused. He sat down in a chair and looked at the wall and wouldn't make eye contact with me and wouldn't record with me because there he was. <laughs> but actually what it was is he's an amazing professional. It was like, well, I've, I've learned sometimes with new voice actors or people on camera, they don't know not to look at you because then you start not talking into the I can't microphone. I believe you remember that. I, was, I thought it was the sweetest thing that you do. You were like, no, I want to help you do your job right today. And yeah. then it went so well that after that, then we started recording together and we all stood up and we're Yeah, because you were kind together. of new to the whole... This is my first cartoon. Right, okay. Yeah. So one thing I found doing Batman Brave and the Bold, it's very sweet that you bring that up, is that if I look at the actor, they tend to look at me because on-camera actors want to like create a scene together. It's not about that. It's about the microphone and creating in your brain like the scene. So you have to imagine it in your head. It's not about looking the other actor in the eye. So when I meet a newbie, it works I never out look for at me them. in your case because right. you're too tall. To <laughs> I never look at them, and it uh, sometimes throws people. But I never look at them because once eye contact is established, yeah. they're going to want it again and again and again. And uh, yeah, so I just never look. That's so funny you remember that. <laughs> the DNA's are there in those characters. I mean, I mean, Booster's a little bit of a dummy in the comic books, and maybe we dial that up to 11. But everybody is, is, is sort of an exaggerated version as they are in the comics, and, is, and so we put that in the script, and as soon as, uh, as Wes casts them and they come in, the actors get it immediately, and they just, they ride that train to the end of the, of the line, the well, space train. That's <laughs> where we figure on the characters, the voices, obviously that's going to carry it through. But there's, you know, what we were always looking for were the characters to be true to what we always grew up with. It might be a little bit off compared to what we might have thought they were, but you know, all the better still. But credit to them, I think they're still looking for that truth because they let our actors that are coming into voice these roles now give their own interpretation right. or add a little ad lib or a sort of character quirk like you're talking about that seems authentic to them. And now that they're established in the character voice, I think right. it all works for like us. Like the original but. Booster, he never got as wild as uh, Dietrich gets now. And that's great because to me that, that feels like Booster Gold, how he should be, how he always should have been. Every time I read a script, it was like reading a good comic book. That was the great thing about the scripts is it made sense, it was really easy easy to figure out what the goal was, what we were doing, but yeah, I would always want to sit down and make sure, like, what is Superman about in this particular episode, and, and, uh, and they didn't make my choices per line and that kind of thing, that would be how I would move, but I don't know how you guys did it. Um, I just show up and wing it. <laughs> <laughs> These guys know it's actually true. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, let's but, do it. But uh, to your point, though, I think you, you mentioned earlier about how the relationships, and you even mentioned this just now, is like that's that's really what it's about is is kind of flushing that out and making that feel palpable and real that these guys with superpowers can actually just talk to each other like normal people. Yeah, yeah, while wearing those suits. Right.